Hi, welcome to Writing with Sandhya. I'm uh, really happy to have Shipali Arora on the channel today. Uh, we have a couple of things in common. Um, she just flew to Jalanda, where it's her hometown. I was there a long time ago when my dad was posted <laughs> there. Uh, we actually have spoken on, on the phone and we've talked about it. So I have connected with her before. Uh, congratulations on your wedding, Shifadi, and welcome to Thank the channel. So <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And uh, yes, we have connected before and I really loved your book too. So there's, uh, it's great to be here on your channel. Actually, yes. it feels great. Thank you so much, Shifadi. Yes. Uh, um, and also she has written about travel, which is something which is very close to my heart. Um, and it's about women travelers. So since uh, this is the International Women's Month, I thought like, uh, let's talk about uh, this topic and this book and, you know, catch up with Shifali. So uh, your book, Dare Dream Travel, it's an anthology of stories. So tell me what inspired that and how did you decide to do an anthology? So I uh, have always been uh, traveling with my family and I love traveling and I also maintained a blog where I used to jot down about the places I used to visit or any tips that I could offer to the readers. So, um, you know, since I have been traveling with my family and a little bit with my friends, I always had this curiosity to know how it feels if you travel solo. But uh, yeah, not unfortunately, but yes, obviously there is some constraint you know which goes on in the head of our uh, parents that no you know it's not safe and they definitely uh, hold you back somehow so due to that reasons I wanted to know uh, more I, I could not go out on my own but I thought that I would like to know from uh, fellow women travelers who travel solo how it feels so I came across a community of uh, women travelers on Facebook many of them they are traveling solo they are exploring places and many of them are uh, uh, travel group leaders who are helping other women to uh, explore the world on their own if uh, they want uh, those who have the aspirations to travel so uh, this really created a lot of this um, i would say um, generated even more curiosity in me and uh, i was inquisitive enough to uh, you know connect with them get to know about their stories so i thought that if i can shortlist the best of the stories, when I heard them, I was truly inspired and I jotted down their experiences and uh, converted them into uh, an anthology. So each story, it will give you an incident from a women traveler's life. Uh, either uh, she's traveling solo or she is uh, traveling in a uh, travel group or she's a travel group leader. But uh, there would be some moments that would inspire you, that would lead to spine chilling moments and that would raise awareness in you that uh, what you need to do if you are traveling on your own and what kind of constraints uh, women face. So I was not the only one who was facing the constraints. Almost every women traveler had this issue that either uh, they have some house chores to do or their families do not let them travel alone because of safety. So they have to take some measures accordingly. So there's the same story in every household almost. So women who are going beyond it, they're convincing their parents who are uh, taking a step to bridge those gaps. I think it's truly great. So I wanted to highlight this aspect through these 15 stories. That's wonderful. So we can live vicariously through these stories and you know experience yes. the journeys, even if perhaps one can't go oneself right away, but maybe it inspires people to travel. Definitely, yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, listening to these stories or the stories that you've jotted down, um, so what uh, you talked about constraints. So what are some of the challenges that women face when they're traveling, particularly when they're traveling solo? So the first one is safety. It's not safe outside, uh, especially when we have a look at the newspapers and media channels. That fear gets aggravated because uh, we hear so many stories, scary stories out there. And so that is the biggest challenge and uh, that women face. So even if women are able to convince their family and go out, there might be some financial constraints or household chores because they have to take care of their family. The women who are married, they have to, uh, you know, uh, see everything like uh, the house errands and also consult their husbands before the, the permission thing, basically. So that was something that uh, I came across when I talked to women travelers that why do we need the permission? This is something, you know, we need our own detox time. So right. this was okay. the one of the viewpoints that I got from women travelers. 
and uh, those who are traveling in groups they are pretty happy because travel groups are giving them an option to have their meal time uh, so i think these are some of the major constraints and when they are traveling on their own so there are issues you know people um, obviously because if you are traveling late at night there are many other issues of uh, getting robbed or thief seizing so so there are many challenges you know it's uh, the, the journey is not easy but yes it is not impossible so if you take all the necessary precautions and you uh, do the things in the right way then you can definitely enjoy your solo trip that is what i learned from all these travels yeah that's nice and so has any one particular chapter inspired you to travel and you're like okay this is really cool i want to go to this place yes so actually the first chapter uh, of the book which is about uh, let me say lieutenant uh, uh, sandhya suri she is a retired indian navy officer she mm-hmm. uh, told us uh, told me in great depth about her road trips so how okay. she takes up her thar and she travels from as far as delhi to vishakhapatnam and uh, it was something that truly inspired me so she is a one man army she is traveling uh, on her own like from one place to another being in the army uh, background also she um, got the opportunity to travel you know to distant places be it with other officers or be it on her own so she had a different level of confidence and uh, that truly inspired me that you know at least if we cannot travel this uh, far at least we can take up some small small trips and uh, increase that level of uh, co- the confidence within so you have to take the first step so her story also began that way she accidentally uh, had to travel uh, solo for the first time because somebody uh, d- uh, ditched on uh, somebody ditched her uh, in between the journey and uh, she had to travel from delhi to jaipur jaipur i guess but from there when the journey started she never looked back so that was something that inspired me that we all need one uh, you know one point one turning point uh, related to whatever we want to do be it uh, solo trips or any other aspiration and then we can uh, just go on from pick it pick on from there on wow that sounds adventurous traveling solo in the thar and yeah. and i think that's a uh, interesting your viewpoint of uh, <coughs> taking one small push uh, and it Correct. doesn't need to be about travel but anything that you are trying to overcome towards something that you want to do so i think that's cool so uh, shifting yeah. gears a little bit towards the writing of it do you have the book by the way can we have a look at the book do you have the book close by uh, i have it right now <laughs> oh okay so i have your book so i can oh my it. god thank <laughs> you yeah let us see a dare dream travel and a very cool cover yes okay yeah. Yeah. i'm glad <laughs> to see it <laughs> yeah. so you know, said 15 stories so there were 15 authors how was it collaborating with uh, so many authors uh, that itself is a different experience definitely it was a very different experience for me because when i uh, published the infinite road i was the only author and i mm-hmm. the bonus was on me and now uh, when there were 15 people on board it was um, challenging and it was enjoyable Enjoy- uh, both the aspects were covered because uh, i got to learn a lot i got to know about their uh, perspective on traveling their stories got inspiration when i wrote their experiences and uh, why it was challenging because collaboration is a daunting task because yes. you need to brainstorm you need to write down their experiences read it the draft get it checked because when you are writing a uh, fiction it is different when you are writing non fiction you need to have the facts correct and that was something only they could uh, you know uh, validate so i had to collaborate with them uh, a lot on that so that before till the end i was uh, getting you know i was asking them about all uh, the things uh, whether they are satisfied with the story how it has turned out the cover everything it was uh, we we were teaming up and doing it so so that onus was on me this time and uh, so it was and once the book was published it was a great sigh of relief but yes i am i feel glad that people are liking uh, the stories and they're liking the different perspectives and on how women traveling you know it is uh, solo women traveling is uh, challenging in its own way but a learning experience So do you think that you're going to write your own travel stories perhaps? Yes, I do want to. I have uh, 
travel stories but i do not have uh, travel stories where i am traveling solo yeah. so <laughs> just general i would stuff. yes yes so i would definitely like to uh, write that but uh, for the time being uh, i uh, i keep writing posting on my blog where uh, i write about my travel experiences or places that i would recommend to other people so yes that is something i want to keep uh, doing although there is um, nothing as major that i have uh, a major challenge that i have faced right now but uh, i would keep uh, posting all the good and the bad pers- uh, perspectives when i am writing hmm. that's nice. so, so so for uh, example i just uh, got one experience so i was traveling with my uh, mother one uh, once and mm-hmm. the car and the car broke down and we were in the midst of a uh, you know an isolated place so so we had to so uh, we literally you know asked somebody to drag the car till the point where there was some light and then we stayed at a relative's place and then went back home the next day so such kind of experiences you know they give you quite a learning experience i think right right i know <laughs> absolutely and um, yeah i read your first book you know the infinite road <laughs> and uh, what uh, particularly struck me was uh, you know you talked about somebody who's adopted a girl child um, and also someone who has challenges so i think uh, that was uh, you spoke about adopting uh, a girl child and uh, and, and that uh, you know was particularly uh, struck home to me because i have adopted a girl child and after i was recording this session um so how did you get that idea and as since it's women so women's month i thought like, we can talk about that how do you did you arrive at that topic what do you feel personally about it well i think i think we discussed about this and i really uh, appreciated your take as well because i feel uh, this is something which is uh, which not everybody does right it is uh, like adoption especially in my book as i talk about adoption of an underprivileged girl so mm-hmm. this is something that you know not everybody would, would do because there are so many again societal constraints what will people say and how would you give that uh, child a future so especially girls women so it is international women's day so yes um, it is very difficult to bring up uh, girls in the right way so uh, for me how i got this idea uh, my mother used to visit an ngo and she would tell me stories about underprivileged kids and women who are staying there and you know they have uh, nobody uh, to look after them yes the ngo is looking after them but yet yet uh, it's a very uh, uh, it's a very different kind of life that they are leading and we are so lucky enough um, but uh, that gave me an idea of uh, a plot where uh, uh, the protagonist that is alankrita she adopts uh, a physically disabled girl and then she has to face various challenges uh while battling her own personal circumstances so how would she be able to give a bright future to the little disabled girl so uh, the old the perspective was that the plot should be interesting but along with that there should be a social message because um, we often overlook such uh, things we do not uh, do a bit for the society and we are often so engrossed in our own uh, monotonous lives that we forget to you know contribute a bit so even if we cannot do as big a thing as adoption but uh, you know we can take small small measures we can help uh, people in our own way as much as we can do so the only uh, idea that came in my mind was that yes people should uh, connect with the plot but they should also uh, connect emotionally uh, you know with the characters and uh, they should leave with a message that yes okay it's it, it is not impossible if we are trying to make a change in somebody's life it is not impossible it is something that will add more hope and positivity in your life yeah no oh, yeah and i'm obviously that totally resonates with me and you know i'm with you on that so it's nice yeah. to see you tackling all these subjects whether it's about women traveling solo or you know uh, <coughs> excuse me adoption of a girl child are there any other topics uh, which you're passionate about and which you might perhaps write about later um well uh, i have experimented uh, writing like i have been writing poems so i have experimented with that i have experimented fiction non fiction 
and uh, yes my writing uh, for now has been driven centric but mm-hmm. um, in the future i might not be yes i want to write more on uh, topics that resonate with the society and uh, that give a social message i have that in mind that uh, but it uh, but i would like to experiment with all uh, different genres maybe uh, some day you know uh, which li- uh, related to somebody from the history or you know i would like to <laughs> or something mm-hmm. else which gives a message to the society so yes there are several ideas in my mind but uh, yes i am yet to implement them and hopefully uh, i will keep adding more to literature that way so okay. yes that's nice so you have uh, as i said you've written a variety of things you've been blogging poems and books um so has writing and publishing changed the way you see yourself uh well yes definitely because uh, earlier when i was young i just had a dream in my mind that i want to write and get published some day and i used to uh, participate in poetry competitions or write articles and stories and i used to do a lot of things and when i got appreciation i uh, felt even more motivated to do something so uh, but at that time i was an aspiring writer so the feeling i think you would resonate with that as well you know the feeling when you have a book the, the book in your hands you go through a lot of challenges while publishing the book also because writing publishing they are two completely different uh, you know horizons and when you write the book the next challenge is to get your book uh, in the hands of the right uh, person the right publisher to get it on the right platform so that the readers can so that it can reach the readers so yes when you get that book in your hands you that is a very different feeling and that makes you uh, feel um, really confident about yourself and it gives you a sense of achievement that okay i have at least uh, what i thought a few years back now i am holding that dream in my hands so as a person it was really gratifying and it really gave me the confidence that you know i should keep writing and uh, keep fulfilling the dream uh, even in the future so it should not be the end and yes whatever you want whatever you truly uh, wish you can achieve that so it definitely gave a boost to my self confidence that's a great message as well um so since you've published it are there any uh, you know unique marketing ideas that you need you have done to promote your book you know so as you said there's a writing part then there's a publishing and then after that there is you know all the promotions that one has to the, do. the, the marketing part which is the most important because once you have published the book if it doesn't reach the readers then it's again uh, a, a problem so yes i have as uh, aggressively marketed the book uh since it was the time of lockdown by the my, the first book the infinite road it came out in 2020 so i used the social media handles to promote my book so i posted across groups i connected with readers on instagram facebook i participated in giveaways and i talked to people through book clubs and so so that's how my reader base grew and uh, that helped me when my second book day dream travel got released so i think it was really helpful because in even in the time of pandemic everything was virtual so even the festivals and book club sessions were virtual and the right. more uh, people you interact with the more people they, they get to know about your book so that was something that really helped me and uh, yes and thanks to that i've even been invited as a speaker by many uh you know colleges and uh, book clubs now so i feel glad that i am able uh, i'm getting opportunities to connect with more readers now so when you start it is difficult but once you pick up that pace then uh, people get to know about you and you get a the base hmm okay so it's not only enough to just write but you also need to be able to speak about Definitely. it and be open to all of that later yes yes, yes. Yeah. okay and so and what do you do um do you have like a job that you're working on yes so i have completed my phd now in computer science so i am teaching in one of the premier institutes of the country so i am trying to balance both my job and my writing and uh, so yes it is uh, again that you need to manage but nothing is impossible and i want to you know carry both the things side by side yeah yeah it's wonderful and hope to see many more books from you you know over the years so any advice you would give to women writers in particular 
well uh, to women writers i would like to say that uh, for us it is uh, somewhere down the line it gets a little difficult to manage a lot of things you know be it the household work or be it your professional um, dreams or so so you know everything is on the plate but uh, it becomes impossible to sit down and write but do not lose hope if you are an aspiring mm. writer or if you are planning to write more in the future do not give up on your dreams dreams mm. your dreams your aspirations are something which are uh, truly important and uh, you should never lose them you should never lose your grip on them uh, take out time do it in bits and parts even if you cannot uh, take out a lot of time do it in snippets but do it right sit down and write and uh, definitely some day you know your work will see the light of the dawn i'm sure it's just that you need to keep yourself motivated through it yeah so that's a wonderful message for women on women's month is uh, do not give up on your dreams right yeah so yeah so now we come to the small rapid fire section <laughs> of uh, the interview um so where would you like to travel solo if everything was near no i think i Yeah, I think I would like to see the Northern Lights. <laughs> oh, Northern Lights. Oh, yes, that's wonderful. Yes, that's a beautiful place. Yeah, and you mentioned about poetry. So, what form of poetry do you like to write? I um, write haiku. That is oh, a okay. short, yeah, yeah, short poem, and uh, it def- it talks about uh, the nature mostly, but we can uh, we incorporate some human feelings into it. So. Yes, it's a seventeen-syllable poem, so that is uh, something which is my favorite. And I, my first book, it was a collection of high school you. So oh, yeah, wonderful. I like it. Okay. So, and I believe you're a musician as well. So, what music uh, do you perform? Well, I like to play the guitar. I like to play Bollywood okay. songs. So, as in when I get time, I play a little bit of guitar and piano. Oh, okay. If I'd known, I would have asked you to, you know, strum a bar or something after this. Yeah. Um. So, what's on your shelf right now? What are you reading right now? Uh, I just finished the Hina Artist by Alka Joshi, and next time picking up a book by Nicholas Sparks, uh, okay. one of my favorite, yeah, one of my favorite authors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, e-books or audio books? Uh, well, I prefer e-books. I like to have my Kindle and you know, sitting somewhere having a cup of coffee and or traveling, and so it's easy for me to read. I do not prefer audio books much, but I like to try. Okay, so with that, we've come to the end of the interview. Thank you so much for joining my channel. It was so much fun to talk to you, and thank uh, you so much. <laughs> and I hope this inspires women and everyone actually to just go out there and travel. Uh, follow their dreams and uh, look forward to you know maybe seeing you here again with your future books thank you thank you so much and i'm glad that you in, uh, have me here and uh, i am also uh, awaiting the release of your next book <laughs> yes <laughs> hopefully inshallah later this year yes that's what sure. we should <laughs> awesome thank you so much thank you bye okay bye bye